Well, good morning, everybody. I am so glad that you can join me. I'm Pastor Craig, and uh, today is a day of celebration. I am excited about our message because really it's the heartbeat that God has given me. And I want to just lay this groundwork today that God's heart is that every nation would know who he is, come to worship him, and be redeemed by him. And when I came to Family Church back in 1998, um, I knew a couple things. I mean, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I knew a little bit about who Jesus was and about God. But honestly, I wasn't following. I wasn't surrendered. And I heard about mission stuff through Family Church really for the first time. And I, honestly, I thought, what in the world are they doing going to Mexico? That was kind of my first inclination when I heard this. And uh, then over time... Um, there were other things that Family Church was a part of. And one of those was Cambodia and missions to Cambodia. And we're going to talk about some of that today. But I want to lay a, a ground level fire hose worth of information. I think at some level you're going to go, whoa, slow down. But I've got a short amount of time to cover a great deal. And I'd love to make this like a three or four week conversation. But for today's purposes, if you don't really understand the heart of missions, I want you to know this is a heart of God because our God is a missionary God. And I'm going to give you three main reasons why Scripture shows that, why Jesus proves it, and what that means for us. So I'm going to start here. If you want to open up your Bibles, um, I'm going to be going quick. So I'm going to just kind of read to you today. I'll share you a few things. And then in your sermon notes, you can go look up these references later or write those down. But I'm going to take you, first of all, to Isaiah 7.14. And the first thing I want you to know about our God being a missionary God is that he came to us. He came to us. And so if you look at Isaiah 7.14, it says this, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. This moment that the, the prophets were foreseeing was a time when God himself would come and dwell with us. He came to us with a passion to prove who he is, but also to be a model for what he calls us to do. So first, I want you to know that God came to us as a missionary God. Second point is that he lived like us. Now, this is one of my favorite passages to read. It's in Philippians. And uh, this is this incredible passage about God, the creator of the universe, the one who spoke everything into existence, who then does something incredible. He says this, who being the very nature of God, we're speaking of Jesus right now, who being the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. It says, rather he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross." Jesus, the representation, the physical representation of God, came and lived like us. Just like the missionaries we send out to foreign lands, to cross-cultural ministry, he came and lived with us. He experienced life. He experienced all the emotions that you or I experience. And ultimately, he said, this is what it takes if you want to reach people is you need to go and be with them. And the third one I would point to would be that he sends us out. That Jesus sends us out. He says, I came to you. I lived with you. I talked about, about who God is. I, I displayed what God is all about. And then, of course, this is usually the most famous missions focus passage many of you are familiar with. But if you've never heard it, you need to hear Jesus' words. He's speaking to his disciples He's already been crucified. He died, was buried, and resurrected, proving he's God, defeating death. And then he says these important words as he speaks to them. He says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you 
to the very ends of the age. You see, Jesus said, look, I'm a missionary God. I came to you. I lived with you. I taught everything you need to know about who I am. And now I send you out to do the same. And today I want to talk very specifically about this missionary God's heart to reach unreached people groups. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but you, at one point in history, you were an unreached people group. You see, when Jesus came, the Jews were, the, the people of Israel were the ones who knew who God was. And he worked in them and tried to work through them and do all kinds of his story. From Genesis, he starts a story about his amazing love for the world. And you were an unreached people group. And so Jesus came and said, it's time. It's time to go to all the people. In fact, then if you continue to read, you'll see in the book of Acts that the Apostle Paul and others then begin to go out and proclaim the gospel to all the Gentiles. That's everybody that wasn't Jewish. Most likely that's you and me if you don't have Jewish origins. Um, go back far enough in your family history and you will find you are an unreached people group. Now that's important to our discussion today. So I want to give you a couple facts about unreached people groups to broaden your understanding of what this means in terms of a global view. So let's take a look at something here. This circle here represents all the people groups on the world, okay? And a people group is a very distinct group of people with a unique language, a unique culture, unique uniqueness apart from others. So it's pretty clear that I'm an English speaker, although I don't do it perfectly, but I speak English and my culture is an American culture, so I'm a mess probably uh, compared to a lot of cultures. But when I go to uh, Mexico, for instance, I am a different people group very clearly. I look different, I sound different, um, even the, the background I come from is very different and I am different in that way. And so. The circle, I want you to see what this looks like because what it talks about is reached, the reachness of people. The green slowly turns around down to yellow, orange, and then red. And I want you to see the section of red in this picture. First of all, let's start with green. Green says significantly reached people. Now, if you're listening to this and you're in America and you're from America and you speak English, you are considered significantly reached. And what that means is, think of it as saturation. You have videos to watch. You have books to purchase in your language to teach you about God. You can go to YouTube and spend hours upon hours listening to other sermons, other preachers. You have the Bible app, the YouVersion Bible app, which we'll talk about a little later. Free on your phone, accessing bunches and bunches of different translations. You are saturated. In fact, you don't have to go far in most American cities to even find a church. You're a saturated people group. You are significantly reached. The further I go down and around, the less the saturation is until you get to unreached. And unreached generally means they don't have saturation at all. They have very few, if any, local believers, churches, pastors, Bibles in their language, and on and on it goes. That's an unreached people group. It's important to know that little distinction they're not reached yet for Jesus Christ. Next graph I want to show you really talks about the finances. And this is where family church's approach to global missions has been influenced. I want you to look at the, the blue circle. So just imagine that this is a circle that represents all the financial investing in churches in the Western church movement in all the West. So I'm going to just specifically say throughout the United States for the simplicity of our discussion. And then there's a little tiny sliver here of red. That's 1% of all the giving, 1% goes to the unreached. 1%, that's a very small percentage. And my point is not to say, oh, we're failing miserably. In fact, my point is to say, yes, we should strive for more. That's my heart and my passion. But it was a driving motivation for family church and why we're gonna to talk today about Cambodia specifically and share a little bit of some other details. And finally, I have one more piece of this because a big part of reaching the unreached really goes to the Bible translation that we help to get the Bible into the heart language of other peoples. 
Now, if you know anything about um, like the pidgin language, if you've ever heard of uh, like the Samoans and places in the Hawaiian Islands and other places, they have a, a language that it's like English, but it really doesn't necessarily speak to you. You'd understand what it says, but you know, they use terms in their language like the big guy in the sky, right? To refer to God. And we would maybe go, I don't really get that. And we say, it's God, that's, that's who it is. Well, my heart language is not that. My heart language is not Spanish or, or Krung or some other language group. My heart language is English. And I don't know if you realize this, but in the course of history, your language, if you are an English speaker, you did not have the Bible in your language. I just want you to ponder that for a second. That you have to go back to around the 1300s when people began to see a need to bring the, the Bible into the English language. And the people who did that, many of them died and were burned at the stake in an effort to bring the Bible to you today so you could read it in your heart language. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard of people across the globe who when they finally get the Bible in their heart language, they say, oh, I've heard people talk about God in other languages, but now I hear God talking directly to me in my heart language. God knows me. It's a really powerful thing. So we're going to talk a little bit about Bible translation a little later on as well. But here's what I want to start with. This brings me to our point. It, at Family Church back in 2005, I remember I was here, there was a move happening to go and seek out an unreached people group. And look at this, this, bit, this paper from that time, if, if you could see it, you'd see Pastor Paul up here working a, a water well pump. But they began a journey that God led them to a people group in Cambodia. And man, I'll tell you, it was a bit weird to watch because like I said, my heart wasn't there yet. I didn't understand what was going on, but it was pretty cool. And as I began to be educated about what it means to go to unreached people, people that have never heard of Jesus, God began to open my eyes. And then some of you might remember this certificate. And if you're in one of the campuses, you might see the one on the wall that's a photocopy of one that you perhaps signed way back in 2005, right? It's quite a few years ago that we've been working on. And this was an adoption moment where we said, today we are claiming the Kroon people as a people group that we desire to see reached for Jesus Christ. We desire to see them have Bibles. We desire to see them worship God, be redeemed by, by God through Jesus Christ. We desire to see them have gatherings and worship songs and churches and ultimately where they as a new people group of Christ begin to reach other people groups. That was our heart. And when we said we adopt them, we said, Missionaries may come and go, but we're committed to these people. And that was an exciting beginning. And it's a, it's a journey that is longer than you would think it takes. But for what has happened in a short amount of time, it's remarkable to see what God is doing. And so we're going to be talking today about Cambodia. This is an opportunity for you, if you're new, to hear a little bit about what are we doing? What is this about? This, for some of you, is the first time you've ever heard of reaching an unreached people group. And for others who have been on this journey since 2005, today is a day of celebration. Because I'm going to share with you the move of God in a powerful way. And today is celebration day. So watch this video. Well, if you were able to be at one of our campuses today, you'd be watching a video of several um, people that we, we know well and are, you're being introduced to. I wish you could be in the campus live because I'm sharing some things today that I can't share with you publicly. We can't broadcast them on the internet for fear of just what might put missionaries or local church leaders in a, in a place that perhaps damages their ability to do ministry in their region. So um, the way I'm going to share with you today, because some of you I know have been a part of Family Church for since 2005. I know that some of you perhaps signed that document I spoke of a few minutes ago, and you've um, been wondering what's going on in Cambodia. So I want to share some general statements. I can't give you the specifics. I can't give you the specific names of people, but we can celebrate together. And I hope that you'll see this as a celebration. You see, this is an important piece that, Family Church, you're a part of the move of God to an unreached people group. 
And this people group in Cambodia, um, it, it's the Krung and the Brow people. We've talked about these people before. But I want you to hear of the things that are happening in that region. And I want you to celebrate. And the first one is this, that you're a part of celebrating and, and participating in the support of a radio ministry. Now, what's the big deal, a radio ministry? Well, here's one of the things. Many of the, the people groups we work with in Cambodia are illiterate. They don't even know how to speak their own language. So when they get a Bible like this, this is, this is one of the Bibles that's almost completed, they even don't know how to read it. So they have to go to education classes to learn to read God's Word. But a radio ministry broadcasts that uh, the word of God in their heart language. And they get a chance to hear that. And I had one other one. I want you to hear this. You can listen to this. You can go to um, your YouVersion Bible app. If you're familiar with that, on your phone, YouVersion. And I want you to listen to the, the Krung language because you can go find this yourself. It's right there in all of your Bible translation choices. I want you to listen to one of our pastors as, a, as he speaks the Krung language and you get to hear um, the expanse of God's word through through the media that's available. Just listen for a second. This is one of the voices that is heard and broadcast. And he was reading from Scripture. And he's a local believer who's been a longtime believer at a time when there are very few Christians in this region. And so I want to thank you and I want you to celebrate that this uh, radio ministry doesn't just go to one language group. It actually goes to five throughout the regions. And in this book, I'd encourage you to, to perhaps pick up, it's in your sermon notes, The Life I Now Live. You can hear the story of a man who went looking for Jesus because he heard about him on a radio ministry. And you can hear a story of a group of missionaries that were brand new to this region who wanted to find a place in the far remote reaches of a group of people who had never heard of Jesus. And when he got there, several were wanting to know more about Jesus. And they said, how can this be? And ultimately what they came to find out is they'd been listening to the radio ministry for several years. So I wanna say thank you, Family Church. You're a part of that work. You're a part and it's big. And I wanted to come back to this Bible. I forgot to mention that this is, this is a, a, the Krung Bible and we're getting close to completing this. I would say, Lord willing, within the last, next couple of years, this is gonna be completed. And you're a part of that work that's been going on since the late 70s, late 70s when that started. And this is another people group that we've, we're supporting, um, very similar to the Krung called the Brow. And this is, this is the Brow Bible and it's about 70% through the New Testament. So work is being done to get God's language into the heart language of these, of these new believers, to bring God into a real relationship with them. One last thing I want to share with you is, um, this is this is a worship book. So these are songs of the Krung and the Brow. And uh, in here, there's 93 now Krung songs and some, uh, what was it, 50 or 79 Brow songs that have been written and, and now are for the purpose of worshiping God. And you've been a part of helping provide the resources to print these books. And I remember this time when I put this out there and I said, hey, we're looking to print some books. Uh, does anybody want to donate to it? And within just seconds, a matter of seconds, Family Church, many of you invested to make sure that these could be printed in the hands of the believers there. So thank you, and I want you to celebrate that. Another one I want to show you, and this is kind of a new thing that's it's been developing over the years. It's called the Pastors Institute. This is a, 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 a gathering for people who are in church leadership, ultimately. And I'm just so excited because this picture that you see here, this is, this is just from about a month and a half ago. And what was going on here was even in the midst of COVID, the government in that region allowed this gathering to happen. There was over 80 that attended and 30 of those were from the Krung and Brow people groups. That's a big celebration. And Family Church, you helped to invest some finances to make that possible, to help provide money for food, to feed all these people and help provide leadership materials. So thank you, celebrate. This is a movement of God. This was not happening that many years ago. And the other thing I want you to know is this is being run uh, primarily now by local uh, new believers, uh, or not new, but new to the faith in terms of people groups. These are, these are run by the indigenous people in that area. 
stumbled over that a little bit. Sorry, everybody. Um, the next one I want to show you is called the Bible Institute. A little different because it's open to anybody that's interested. And you can see here that 85 attended this. And this was, this was just a few weeks ago as well. Again, run by locals, run uh, with the help of local missionaries. But now it's almost handed off entirely to the local indigenous church. It's a celebration because what this shows you is that God is moving and God is at work. The other thing I want to celebrate with you is the, the image of Christian weddings. Now, this wedding is actually just last week. Um, we sent a team to Cambodia, and when they got there, the first event they got to be a part of was a wedding. Now, why this is important is I didn't talk about this at the beginning, but I want to lay a, a framework for why all of the things I'm sharing are such a miracle of God. For one, the Krung and Brow people were animistic. So an animistic culture is one where they worship spirits in the trees and they live in fear of these spirits that dwell in the trees and throughout the forest. And so what they do to appease spirits is they will often do animal sacrifices. So if your crop looks like it might fail or somebody's sick in your home, you'll go to the local witch doctor or shaman and you'll, you'll ask, what, what do we do to, to help uh, keep the evil spirits happy. And sometimes it'll be as extreme as a large water buffalo. And, and the, better, the basic way to put it is, the more you can make that animal suffer, the better chance you have of pleasing the, the spirits of the forest to grant you health or grant you success in your harvest. You see, that also plays out in the Christian weddings now. See, many of the weddings of the, of the earlier days were filled with drunkenness um, and animal sacrifice. And today, it's a celebration of what God is doing and the bringing together in these married couples. And it's a big move and a big change happening in this culture. Now, I want you to celebrate because this was not the case until just a few years ago when one of the first Christian weddings actually happened. Next, I want to talk about baptisms because baptisms is a huge symbol of the move of God in the hearts of new believers. And so uh, this particular village, this was a time a few years ago, I got to be at this baptism. And it was a funny moment because this guy right here, this is the pastor, and he reaches around and he baptizes him. And the guy's underwater. And then all of a sudden, the pastor turns around and starts celebrating and talking. And he forgets the guy is underwater. And then he kind of realizes after about five seconds, oh, no. And he goes over and pulls the guy up. The guy didn't know he was supposed to just come up on his own. It's kind of a funny moment, but you see the reality is this particular village that you see here, when I went into this village several years ago, um, we walked in and it was um, a village of two believers, this pastor and his wife. And over the course of one very rainy winter, nobody could get across to this little village. It was surrounded by, you know, blocked off by a large river. They couldn't get across because of the amount of rain. And when the rain subsided, when the rivers had dropped down, um, there was a celebration. In fact, 13 people had come to faith and were getting baptized in this same location. So I want you to celebrate that because of the energy and effort, because of the financial commitment and prayer, you are a part of seeing God's kingdom expanding in Cambodia. One more thing it's worth talking about is this picture here because this is really a picture that many years ago, if you ever saw these gongs, you would have only seen them at animal sacrifice and other types of spirit worship. In fact, it was a long journey for the new believers to realize that they could play these gongs in honor of God rather than for animal sacrifice and spirit worship. And when they came to that realization, the interesting thing is that's a big piece of their culture. But many of the locals now have sold their gongs for money, don't have them anymore, don't know how to play them. But it's the Christians who are now retaining that culture and they're using them for worship today. They're using it as part of their music as they sing those songs of praise to God. And so we celebrate the transformation of life that is happening as people are coming to faith in Jesus. I want to finish with uh, one last bit. I want to take you to Psalm 67 because the whole heart of this message is that our God is a missionary God and he calls us to go just as he came to us. Look at God's heart in Psalm 67. He says, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us so that your ways may be known on the earth, your salvation among the nations. 
And then he says, may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And finally, the land yields its harvest, God. Our God bless us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth would fear him. God's heart is that all the nations would know him, that all the nations would come to love him and, and receive his love. And that idea of fear is to say, I acknowledge that you are all powerful and all creator. So I hope that you find today a time of not only maybe a deeper understanding of why we go to the nations, but I hope that you hear that our God is a missionary God and Family Church has been a part of trying to reach the nations and we want to continue to do so. I wish I could tell you of all the other people groups that we're now uh, trying to reach into and we're a part of. Um, perhaps someday if you come to a campus and you can, uh, I'd love to meet with you and share a little bit about what that looks like. I do want to say for some of you, I know that you perhaps couldn't come to a campus today or you were at a campus last weekend. I want to say thank you for um, the bake sale we had. We're sending a team to Mexico here in March. So thank you for helping us raise over $1,900. Also for those that invested in helping uh, send gifts to missionaries in Cambodia, you donated $2,200 toward that. So thank you for that investment. And then finally, I just want to say thank you. We have at our campuses in Roseburg area, we have these bags. It's cans that you can you fill in your, you know, your empty cans, drop it off at the bottle drop center, and uh, then the money goes to missions. And I just pulled out $4,000 from your can money. It's really cool to see. Um, very easy for you to do so you can get those bags at your campuses. But one of the things I want you to know is it keeps going and we're raising more money for the youth. I think we've raised around $10,000 since we started using this can drop system. So I want to thank you for that. And then if you have more cans and want to start bringing those at the campuses, get the bags, take them to bottle drop. The next round of money is going to go to a youth team in June. Well, I want to finish with one last thing. Where do we go from here? In your sermon notes, I've got some ideas, but I just want you to, to think through some general ideas. How can I be involved in global missions? And simultaneously, how can I be involved in reaching people in my own community? What does that look like? Well, the first one is prayer. And I encourage you to be a participant in prayer for people in your community and prayer for those who live across the globe that we support, or maybe you know somebody who supports. Um, we encourage you to be a part of sending people. Maybe that's financially. Maybe that's just caring for people who are getting ready to go. Um, for those that actually go, maybe God is calling you to go to the mission field. And there's some resources on your notes. You can go and look at websites to, to pursue that. Also, you can be a welcomer. You see, God brings people to you. Throughout, uh, throughout Douglas County, there's lots of people who come, who may be coming from unreached people groups in the world, and they're in your own neighborhood. So being a welcomer, bring them into your home. Same with just your neighbors, right, as we witness to them. Um, learn more. Spend time learning what is this about. I encourage you to do that. Invest your finances. Invest your talents, your time. We have some people that are helping agencies work on computer technologies. Uh, they don't go to the people group where they're at, but they're helping all the way from here invest in somebody far across the globe. And finally, mobilizing is really about helping equip and encourage somebody, maybe you know, that's being called by God to go to the mission field. I hope that you're encouraged today. I'm sorry I couldn't celebrate all the, the details with you, but I just want you to know God is at work and you're a part of uh, going as family church as we send people, as we give and we support. We are a part of helping see unreached peoples come to the truth of Christ. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great afternoon.